Hey everybody, it's Rob here. This is the Hammer of the Gods Warrior Titan Ascendancy. Look at that hammer. Boom on the boss, 20% already dead in one hit. And this is one of the possible builds that I'm looking forward to play in the upcoming launch this Friday, tomorrow. So we have a build here and a big shout out to Connor Converse here who crafted this build and I chatted with him, he gave me some tips. I'm gonna link his full video and also the link here on PoE skills in the description. This build can literally do thousands and maybe even like millions of damage during the end game. It's one of the most hard hitting skills that we have seen so far. Now obviously take everything with a grain of salt here guys because no one has really played the game and we don't fully know yet. This is just speculation and this is a setup that I'm looking forward to play because I like Hammer of the Ancients already in Diablo 4, you know me. We go uh, big with the Barbarian in Diablo 4 and the Warrior with the Titan Ascendancy is somewhat similar and we have this Hammer of the Gods dealing 1300% attack damage already. And the main principle of the build is like we do this big damage, I'm gonna show you some more gameplay later. We do this like big damage on one hit and then we have a bit of a cooldown, 24 seconds here, but we can juice that big hit because we deal a lot of damage in Path of Exile. If you do a lot of damage, you have a high chance of proccing ailments and we are looking to proc ignite and then scale that ignite dot similar to what we would do with a bleed with berserk ripping in Diablo 4. Scale that ignite dot over like uh, four seconds here doing another 90% of the base hit with ignite and as the hammer of the gods has such a high dps count it is very likely to inflict ignite and we basically take a ton of uh, support gems that help us with ignite and with more damage on this um, big hammer hit and the idea is and the corner has done some calculations you can watch his video i mean i don't know like how the math and everything works in path of exile yet but i'm hopefully we'll learn fast and the idea is that maybe like you know when your character is a bit more progressed there is a chance to one shot the bosses and uh, you can see this like a little bit here in the footage that we'll watch more later like it's already this is just a level like 25 warrior and he's already doing like 20% damage with one of these hammer of the gods and in this footage he only has a three link like if you have a full like juiced link here also with reforge where it spends some of your rage like some of your resources to deal another 35x multiplier we're basically just scaling and scaling all the multipliers and then scaling the resulting dot ignite effect that's uh, that's um happening after the big hit. We also have the Infernal Cry. This is basically like a war cry that is buffing that skill even further. And the links to the war cry are all supporting skills that get supported by the war cry. You can see here, supported war cries consume 10 rage, causing attacks exerted, so buffed by them to deal another 30%. So we are basically creating almost like a, like a, a 10 or 11 link effect here with the Hammer of the Gods and the Infernal War Cry, like this is basically all buffing the, um, the supported skill of the War Cry even further. So uh, we're getting a ton of damage here from this uh, War Cry. So that's like basically this is our main attack and then we juice it, we juice it. Um, then we have the Blasphony. This one provides debuffs on the monsters. Uh, it basically is providing like a curse aura here. Um, where, we de where we either take less damage or we deal more damage with all these uh, uh, different effects. There's been some like nerfs to this already. I think Enfeeble has already been nerfed. Like it used to be like crazy, crazy damage reduction that we get. But in general, um, you also want to build defenses in this game, but I like to build very offensive. So we'll see how that's going to like treat us. I might die a lot, but it's going to be a ton of fun seeing those like a big <laughs> hits with the hammer of the gods. So blasphemy is just basically an aura uh, that we can then apply and reduce the action speed, make them slower, uh, you know, make increased area of effect and debuffs have a higher chance of igniting all that stuff. Um, and we're going to talk about the passive tree in a bit as well after we go through the skills. Um, then we have the leap stem. This is like a gap closer, like we can jump around. Uh, very cool here. Faster attacks, inspiration, holy sand. I didn't like, they're not all like filled out completely, but I'm pretty sure Connor is also going to cook more. So definitely check him out. And the link, 
to the skill tree I'm going to have below is the one from Corner, and he probably is going to update it. I just want to show it to you because this is like a, at least for PoE standards, a somewhat straightforward build. And I think Corner has a great track record of predicting metas in PoE 1 as well. Um, then we have the Herald of Ash here, basically causing overkills, dealing even more AoE damage and overflowing some of those ignites that we have on the targets here. You see all the support gems here as well. Then we have the Defiance Banner. This is just basically another buff uh, that we can get here uh, with extra duration. Then we have like a Supercharged Slam and also Stampede here that we can continuously uh, use when our Hammer of the Gauze is on cooldown because you see we have a 24 seconds cooldown that we have uh, to wait. And then we also have the Lightning Storm, and this is a spell. In PoE, every character can cast spells as well. And what the Lightning Storm here is for, and this is a bit of a question mark, because um, in order to uh, you know, afflict ailments, we are looking for the Shock ailment, because Shock works very similar to Vernable in Diablo 4. So you are kind of getting, uh, I think it's a 1.3, 30% increased damage uh, just from the... Um, Lightning Storm shock effect if you have a shock uh, here and uh, if ch shock chance is not scaling with your damage but still has a 20% chance to apply that shock on spell, we have a good way of basically getting another 30% debuff on the monster with the shock ailment and then uh, buffing it basically. So that could be pretty cool as well. And then yeah, here's Stampede. Uh, with just a bunch of like um, DPS uh, multipliers as well. Like kind of, you know, like when our uh, Hammer of the Gods is on cooldown. So this is like a bit of an endgame build that we are looking forward to um, tech into. And what's also really important is to pick up these uh, key passive note here from the Avatar of Fire to convert your um, Hammer of the Gods, which is baseline of physical damage. But we need to convert it in order to proc our Ignite, we need fire damage. So this one is converting 75% of it into fire damage. And then there are a ton of Ignite nodes here. I don't think like everything is unlocked here. Um, but there's like uh, some red clusters that do, I don't know if we have a search here. Uh, ah, yeah, here. There's like a ton of like Ignite damage. Like, you know, there's like a bunch of like effect of Ignite. You see like all this. Ignite, 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 Ignite. So we can scale Ignite very, very well here. There's a ton of uh, basically damage that we can um, scale the Ignite with. And on top of these, a lot of these small nodes here have Ignite at like 20% chance to Ignite and all this stuff. And we can boost them all with our Ascendancy, the Titan ascendancy here with hulking form basically giving another 50 percent a multiplier on all these like chance to ignite on all these like small ignite nodes there's also like a ton of like ignite damage nodes and stuff yeah here chance to ignite so i'm pretty sure like with the big damage that we have here the theory is that we have basically almost a hundred percent chance because we have high damage and high chance to inflict and ignite and then cause like a big burn that we can step with that we can scale that's the theory here and we'll see and obviously this is also like um, a, an end game build and there are a couple of more nodes that you definitely want to take here like giant's blood for example and um just a ton of like uh, cool things to scale your damage so we're playing like two two handers and uh, basically get some big damage. We'll see if this is going to even work, guys. Again, this is just what I'm interested in, what I'm going for. And I talked to Connor a little bit, who the guy who like, basically like, theory crafted this build, a very seasoned a Path of Exile veteran, and I'm very much looking forward to play this. However, uh, during leveling and during early game, you might want to spec a little differently. Um, I think early on, he was also recommending maybe we're going to go for like a one hand and a shield to kind of like be a bit more safe on those fights. And I think early on it was making a lot of sense to go shield and then at some point um, switch to the two-hander here. And obviously like we'll wait until we have a full skill tree. But Giant's Blood is basically like a bit more end game. And um, then also like Avatar of Fire, like in the, in the beginning, like this video that you see here, this guy is not scaling any fire damage yet. Like this is basically uh, just the pure direct damage. And you see he's doing it again here. The hammer is coming from the sky and boom! 20% of the boss HP is, is basically just gone. Like you see, watch this again here. Like he's, so this has like an animation. You see, it's like the skill like down here, like all the way on the right. And once he casts it, like it goes on cooldown and then the hammer comes from the sky and boom, big damage. Obviously he doesn't have any ignite yet, but even the direct, just the physical damage part of it 
is already pretty insane and he's doing some pretty good DPS already with this kind of setup here. And that boss fight is uh, pretty incredible. We can also see the, um, I think the Ignite here, I'm gonna like uh, play some gameplay here and talk. Obviously this is like just a, like a low, low level, like kind of like leveling build. I'm probably gonna make a separate leveling version as well. But for now, this is just, I, I've not really like looked that much into the leveling thing. I was like, this is like the build that I'm, that I want to build uh, forward to long term. Obviously, you know, you don't have this hammer of the gods from level one. So there's probably skills like Sunder that look pretty promising here uh, to play early on and together with some like armor breaking and some slams. That's probably something I'm looking forward to do for the leveling, but I might make a separate video on that if I decide this like tomorrow, um, what I'm gonna go for leveling. But yeah, Hulking Form is a big one. It's a big investment though, four points to get that multipliers. And uh, we can get some life that always helps, or you're gonna go for six and seven here and get some of those heavy stuns, especially early on if you are playing um, Sunder, because Sunder has a crazy synergy. It basically uh, has a high crit damage and guaranteed two crit bonus if you are armor breaking the target. And there's a ton of ways to do this with uh, our mighty warrior. And this is just like one example here that you can play. I also want to show you the hammer of the gods here in, in some gameplay here. Just to get you the immersion again, all the links will be linked below, guys, of, of both of this stuff. And I'm gonna move, this is a gameplay from the Gamescom. You see there's still four flasks, so this is not like the most up-to-date. But you can kind of like get a feeling of what you can expect if you're playing Warrior. And then we don't know how it's gonna be in the end. Game, right? In the end game, it might be completely insane. Boom. So you see like the gameplay is a bit slower. But you are hitting like big time when you hit it. You see like the mighty cries. And him slapping all these targets. The density is also looking pretty good. He's doing the leap attack that we have in the build as well. And you know, just like experiment around with it, especially during the leveling phase. Just play whatever you like. And he should be using the Hammer of the Gods here, yeah, I think he will be. It's like whenever he's calling the hammer from the sky. Okay, here he's calling it, and he's coming down, and boom! All the monster it hits are instantly dead, basically. Those two were out of range. But that's basically how it goes. And I think the playstyle does look pretty fantastic. I really uh, enjoy this. Obviously, yeah, it could be faster, and I think it will be faster uh, during the end game. I'm going to link this uh, footage here down below as well. Again, this is from the Gamescom, so it, it might change a little bit, but... I mean, like these boss fights, just throwing the hammer early on. And I can also imagine this being pretty cool in the party. If you're just like your party members buffing you and then you just have this like, you know, one big hit here, like that's coming and boom. <laughs> Basically slapping his face, man. And he's looking very good on this, like, Act 2 boss here. That he's melted. So, he, like, you see, you need to dodge a little bit. He's also using WASD, basically, just to dodge. And yeah, maybe the... Okay, and then they have boom again. And I think he has, like, a double charge. He has also, like, a double charge a support wound that you can use for Hammer of the Gods. But you see, he has two hammers, and the boss is already half dead, basically. And he's never even been getting hit. But you see now, like, the cooldown, like, right next to his mana bar, like, the cooldown kind of has to refresh all the time. He's using, like, a bunch of supportive gems here, and he also has to stand behind the, um, behind the weapon here to basically, like, able to dodge this deck. But you can, like, pretty comfortable play it safe and just wait until you have off the god's cooldown. You know, go slower, and then you can just keep using hammer off the gods, right, to so just melt the boss. So I think this gameplay is looking like really fantastic. It's up here, he's using the sword again. Bam, bam. I think it's about two more hammers and then that guy is dead. So he has even good damage like on, on some of his slams and on some of the other stuff. He's using it again on the trash and boom. I think this one was a bit wasted. I think you really want to hit the boss uh, with that hammer. But you know, we're just all getting started in the game. So there's definitely a ton of stuff to learn, right? 
look, it's coming off cooldown in a few seconds again. Chop, chop, chop. Yeah, yeah, I gotta really have to dodge uh, the attacks here and some of the mechanics. Boom, boom. And with that, I think he's logging in. The cooldown is ready. He will call the gods. And... Boom. Sayonara, boss. Dash. So yeah, my friends, that's the build I'm looking forward to play. I think it's going to be a ton of fun. You can see it here in this footage as well. He has the Hammer of the Gods. He has 3000 DPS, like way more than a bunch of his other skills. And this was what he was using in the video. Armor Breaker could be pretty cool again. And then also with Sunder early on. But yeah, this is the planner, guys. I'm going to link it uh, below. Also, make sure to check out Corner Corniverse. He made a great video explaining more details. And I think he's definitely one of the, the guys here to, uh, to watch out to make some cool warrior content. Hope you enjoyed, my friends. Good luck on the launch tomorrow. Let's go log in.